Hello guys, hope you're having a lovely day. I'm Divyan Shagruwal and you're watching Tech University. Today I have brought you yet another data science course that is offered by Simon Fraser University. So this course goes by the name of Masters of Science in Computer Science. And in this video, I will be telling you about the program overview, program curriculum, how to apply eligibility criteria, fee structure and scholarships if there are any. So stay tuned to the last of this video to know everything about this course. And if you like the video, please do subscribe my channel. I'll keep posting data science videos and share this video with your friends as well who are looking for data science courses. Now, if we talk about the Simon Fraser University, it is situated in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. It's a vibrant city, of course, and they've got a world rank of 298. So it's a decent one. Student to faculty ratio is also decent. 21 scholarships are there. I'll be telling you about in a little bit. And the international students number is around 8000. So you will be getting a very cosmopolitan environment out there. If we talk about the subject rankings, so the computer science department is ranked at 136 in the world, uh, which is even better than the original world rank. So you can definitely check out this university. And the graduate employability ranking is also decent one given you have to get placed with a very reputed firm. So you will definitely get uh, returns on that. Now, if we talk about this course again, back to this, this course is offered in three different concentrations, namely big data, visual computing and cybersecurity. In this video, we'll be talking about the big data concentration, but the general architecture of this particular program is same for all the uh, concentrations, except for the difference in the courses that are being taught in different concentrations. If we talk about uh, the architecture of this particular course, so you will have to complete 15 credits from graduate coursework and 12 credits of specialized lab work and three credits of co-op work. So co-op is nothing but internships in Canada basically. And this program runs for four semesters that is equivalent to 16 months. And you will have to complete an internship in the last semester and the rest of the three semesters you have to study. So this was about the structure. Now, if we talk about the tuition fees, so for the domestic students, the tuition fees is close to 8,000 Canadian dollars. And for international students, it is close to 11,000 Canadian dollars. And uh, if we total them for four semesters, the international students tuition fee goes to 44,000 Canadian dollars. And if we convert it into Indian rupees, it would be corresponding to uh, nearly 26 lakh Indian rupees. And uh, if we talk about the scholarships, you will be eligible entitled to 30,000 up to 30,000 Canadian dollar scholarships. This is generally offered to domestic students as they speak, but exceptional international students. So if you have a very stellar uh, profile, so they can get you the scholarship of 30,000 if you are an international student as well. Now, if we talk about the big data concentration, so big data concentration curriculum is like you have to complete 12 credits from core courses which are machine learning and distributed cloud systems and two courses you have to select from these six courses here shown and you have to complete 12 credits of lab courses so there are two labs uh, programming for big data one and programming for big data two and apart from that you have to select a three credit elective course as well from the this bucket of courses so it totally depends upon your interest what course you're gonna take so that's up to you and if we talk about the admissions requirement, so for all the three domains, they have given different admission requirements. Uh, for big data, you need the ability to program in Java, Python and C++ and you should have the ability to learn new languages. So there is a possibility that they may introduce R, MATLAB anytime in between the course. And you have to know, have the knowledge of calculus, linear algebra and advanced statistics. Apart from that, you need to have data structures and algorithms, database and operating systems knowledge in your arsenal. Now, if you talk about uh, the Indian requirements more specifically, so you need to have four years of bachelor's degree with an overall grade of B minor. B minus is a very lenient option here, so but but don't get uh, too overwhelmed with this. For the students who are in second or third year of their bachelor's currently watching this video, make sure that uh, you get to A, A plus so that uh, you don't go into the bare minimum criteria rather than you should look out for uh, getting that 30,000 scholarship. Apart from that, they have also said that three year degrees are also valid given the degree is in first class. So first class is nothing but an eight out of 10 point scale and the institution from which you are uh, studying your three year degree should be accredited by INA and NAAC with a grade of A or better. So it totally depends on the accreditation of your institution as well. And apart from that, if your institute is of national importance, such as IITs, 
or TIFR. So uh, that is also a big plus if you have three year degree from these institutes. Now, if we talk about the international requirements, of course, the English language requirements are there. So uh, they accept most of the general English tests like TOEFL, IELTS, KL, PTE and Cambridge. Uh, as usual and you need to have a TOEFL score of 93 out of 120 in IBT with 20 in each category so again the leniency is there and uh, uh, IELTS you need to have an academic band score of 7.0 out of 9 and this test should be not general it should be academic IELTS not the general IELTS and minimum of 6.5 in each section is also required apart from that but if you are the students from Africa watching this video there is good news for you. You don't need any English language proficiency because most of the African countries are exempted from English language requirements. Now, if we talk about the how to apply section, so for fall 21 intake, the admissions are of course closed now. For fall 2022, the admissions will again reopen in October 2021. So mark that date in your calendar uh, the date is approaching soon and you can just go apply make your documents ready right now the required documents so you need to have reference letters from professors employers or mentors and uh, they should be completely professional and not uh, personal like from friends or family members and uh, you need to give the evidence of completed IELTS or TOEFL test apart from that you need to have an updated CV so this CV should be different from what you uh, upload for a job so academic CVs are totally different. You can just Google it and you will get how to write academic CV. And uh, apart from that, you need to give a statement of purpose. Statement of purpose basically is something which you don't uh, explain in your resume. It is more of a personal connect with the reviewer of your application. And why do you want to pursue this course? Why specifically SFU? So all these type of questions are answered uh, in this uh, document. And you need to have uh, the transcripts with you. So these are the things that uh, was required mainly and if you want to know how to apply this is the online application system internal op online application system for Simon Fraser University uh, you have to create an account and you will be given an ID and you have to set up a password and once you log in you will be asked for these four things department program concentration and start date so department goes for computer science program is professional MSc in computer science concentration is whatever whatever you choose big data visual computing or cyber security but in this case we are talking about big data so you're gonna go with big data and the start date uh, of course would be fall 2022 for you guys if you are watching this video now now if we talk about the co-op information co-op programs so this co-op program is a mandatory thing to for you to complete and uh, it is a part of their curriculum you have to complete this internship in the last semester of this course and as for this peak 99% of the students who were enrolled into this course were successful successfully placed within the campus and uh, with an average salary of 4500 Canadian dollars so that's a very decent one so if you can use this to reduce your tuition fees that would also do that and uh, after that they have given the testimonials of how is it like to work as a co-op student and finally the team uh, which looks out for co-op program now there are there might be still some questions that I haven't covered in this video so here we go in the FAQ section so do you have a spring intake for the program no there is no spring or winter intake there is just a single intake which is fall and which campus houses the program it's on the Burnaby campus which is the main campus for SFU there are two other campus in Surrey and uh, Vancouver but this is in the main campus and there is no need for the supervisor in this course because this is not a research based course so there is no academic supervisor required in this course and if we talk about uh, GRE or GMAT the main thing most of the universities uh, do write awkward sentences in this question so but they are clearly stating that we do not require a GRE or GMAT score for this admissions to this program there is no however no but no ifs so you don't need to give GRE how do I check the status of my application you can go to this particular link and uh, the user ID I told you about you have to log in through that user ID and password and then you can view the application status and uh, the offer letters are generally issued in March and April so if you have applied right away in October it doesn't mean that you will be receiving a response within a week within a month or within two months or so you will have to wait for March and April so just apply by October 
and sit back and relax for the offer letter to come by March and April. So if you still have any other questions, uh, you can just go to the ticketing system, raise your ticket and ask your questions for this particular course and they will come up with a reply to your question. So this was all about this particular course. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends who are looking for data science courses. I will keep posting data science videos on this channel. Next time, I will be seeing you with another data science course. Till then, au revoir.